Hi, welcome to Have Roots Will Travel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Um, this series that I've been doing, if you're new to the channel, is about Mifijawa, the King's Daughters. And we are exploring every week a different Fijawa, getting to know her, traveling with her as she comes across to new friends and settles in, in, in a part of Quebec. And we explore that part and also any um, descendancies and things of that nature. We, we are really getting to know each of these Fijawa. And of course, I am a descendant of many Fijawa as well, being from a uh, little town in, in um, in, Drum in Quebec called Drummondville, Quebec. Um, and um, I just wanted to pay homage. This is how this whole thing got started. I wanted to pay homage to a few things you want. And then I just, I got the bug and I started doing all of them. And um, just, I want to share with, with viewers what I find, what I can find out and how I can explain it and all of that. So, um, if you're interested in me exploring a Fijiwa in particular, please note down, you know, you can just write down in the uh, comments below some girl or lady that you would like me to feature. Um, you can also email me at Lisa at Have Roots Will Travel. I'm also on Facebook um, as Have Roots Will Travel and also on, on Twitter. So um, would love to hear any and all comments. And also, um, if you want it, subscribing and notif getting notifications and all that, it will be great for you because then you'll know when I post new content and it could be one of yours. Um, and I try to post a schedule. I've kind of started doing that where I post a schedule online so you kind of know ahead of time. So that's also something I've started doing. So with that being said, let's get started, shall we? So regular viewers of the channel know that I have produced a video called Les Fijawa, the program 2.0. And in that video, it's about 20 minutes long, I talk about how the program was started, why it was started, what the girls had to do, all of that, the ins and outs of the Fijawa as a program. So I, I would um, absolutely encourage you, if you haven't already, to look at that video just to give you a perspective, if you will. So who are we going to look at today? Her name is Anne Elisabeth de Tarragon, and she is actually a viewer request. And when I looked in my files, I saw she was the um, great grandmother of, remember the boy next door that I was talking about, regular viewers know? Well, his wife. Now I've, I've got um, his wife in the program. So um, this is one of her great grandmas. So I'm glad to be able to include her. Now, Anne Elizabeth of Terrego is an interesting story for many reasons. So let's get to know her a little bit. So Anne Elizabeth was born in 1651 in the parish of Saint Pierre de Trancainville in the Eure et Loire regions of France. So you can kind of see where where it's located, just kind of um, up north from Paris, essentially. Her parents uh, were the Squire Lou de Terrego and Elizabeth de Merlet. Now. The, you need to know that this means that she was of noble birth. We don't know, um, you know, we don't know all of the particulars and all of that, but we do know that her mother passed away in 1662 and her father would get married a couple of years later. She was about 11 years old at this time. So um, just so you know, the church where she would have been baptized is there, dates from the Middle Ages, of course, and then largely a farming community. Um, so let's have a look at how Anne, and the mystery really involving Anne's uh, travels to New France. Now, regular viewers will know that I always have a ship's name. I always put in the information and I'm glad to do it. This one, you know, I have too much conflicting evidence. So here's the deal. On one of the websites I use, it says that she came across in 1663. She would have been 12 years old at that time. Um, it's one of the best websites I use. Now, Peter Gagne's book says she, came, she comes across about 1670. So the only actual, um, you know, idea that I, and she does not get married until 1676. Okay, so that means she would have been about 25 years old um, at that time. 
So let's let's just kind of analyze this a little bit. Imagine that her mother dies, her father's from noble birth. He's like, you know, he knows the probably knows Jean Salon. He probably knows, you know, the these the high and mighties, and he's like, Well, what can I do with my daughter? Possibly uh, he sent her um, and she might have been housed at one of the places in Quebec City at Maison Saint-Gabriel and we don't know because she was so young and um, he may have sent her away and she just kind of lived amongst the people until she suddenly emerges. Um, so that is a possibility or she might have taken uh, a ship. She would have had to take a ship and she is a qualified fille du roi. She is absolutely qualified. She, she's on the PDL-ash list. I mean, there's no question that she is a fille du roi. We just don't know when she came across. So this is a mystery and it's just kind of, th this woman is a, a woman of mystery for many, many reasons. So let's get to know who she picks as her groom when she finally decides to get married. And also another thought crossed my mind, maybe she actually wanted to enter the convent and became a nun. And maybe, you know, this is what prolonged her, you know, absence, you know, making up stories in my head, you know, I'm a writer, so this is what I do. So the groom that she finally selects is born in Toussaint in Rennes, Brittany. Uh, he was born in 1641, so he's about 10 years older than her. He arrives in New France as a soldier with the Sorel Company of the Carignan Regiment on August 15, 1665. Remember these dates. I mean, like, okay, what's going on here? Notice how there's no dates because we don't know exactly when they got married. There's no record. So I just have a church. At some point, they would have gotten married, perhaps in Sorel, perhaps in another, in somebody's home. We do not know. And um, we do know, and it will become clear in a few minutes, a few seconds, but we do know that they do end up having children. So let's have a look at what um, has transpired. So, the family grows, um, doesn't grow that much, but we do have Pierre who marries uh, Gertrude Moga and has seven children, all of whom make it to adulthood. Jean-Baptiste marries Jean Renou, Jeanne Renou and has 12 children, all of whom make it to adulthood. So out of those two children, we have 19 grandchildren. So that's a start. Gilles, we do not know. No other record of him exists. Of course not, you know. Now, what happens? This woman of mystery would die sometime after 1682. The reason why they say that is because she was a, um, you know, a woman who was obviously could still bear children. Uh, she was a godmother on many records, but all of a sudden, as of 1682, we stop hearing about her. So sometime between 1682 and 1692, she would pass away. And the reason we know 1692 is that in um, 1692, Gilles does remarry, and it says he is the widow of Anne Elisabeth de Terragon. So we have to you know, kind of lean together the information. Um, don't you wish you could just, you know, go back and say, sign some documents, do something so that I can know who you are. Uh, and perhaps, you know, at some point we will get to know more. Things are unfolding all the time in genealogy, but this is the information that we have at hand. So even though Anne Elizabeth did not, um, you know, she kind of flickered like a candle, flickered in and out of our lives. She was able to produce two children. And, um, you know, what's interesting is, although they have no, dis I think she had by 1729, there were 27 descendants or something like that of this couple. Um, the fact that a viewer has, is a descendant of it and the boy next door's wife, I mean, it still, it doesn't require a lot to make a mark, to make those two people are here because of this, you know, this ghost really who came in and out and just contributed and left this planet. So with that, we thank Anne Elizabeth for what she could do. And we're sad that her life um, was not as fruitful as it could have been, but certainly um, we are grateful that she existed.
And with that, we end the episode number 58, and we will be seeing you on 59 um, very shortly.